All right, so this is going to be a pretty short one. I explained a little bit about the uh, materials before, but uh, we're going to go just a little bit more in depth on them so you can get a better feel for them, how they work. Okay, you see I opened up the uh, default head here. Again, just go in the light box, and it's under there under the demo head. And open that up. And uh, when you uh, when you use ZBrush, by default, everything you open, import, whatever, uh, unless you have a saved tool, it's going to have the red wax material applied to it. Okay? And um, it's fine. It works. It's uh, nothing special, but it works enough to where you can uh, tell where the definition is. Uh, it's got enough specular highlights and all that kind of stuff, but nonetheless, sometimes you're going to want a different material to work with. And um, another common one is the basic material and the basic material too. The difference being just to have slightly uh, more specular highlights on the basic material tool makes it a little easier to see some of the higher detail you have coming out of your sculpt but anyway so everything like I said before is going to be found here in the material picker and uh, in the shelf menu and all that um, again each time you select a different material it's going to come up here in the top shelf all your recent materials so you uh, you can just pick any material you want by doing that there are a lot of really cool materials. This is usually the first thing people play with when they open up ZBrush and they notice it. Because it's just kind of cool to see the different materials you can apply. But um, So you can uh, do that. And then basically uh, what happens each time you select a material is it applies it by, uh, by default. And it applies it to everything, including your subtools. But uh, sometimes, obviously, you're not going to want the same material applied to all your subtools. So, uh, in order to make sure that you have the material applied only to what you want it applied to, just make sure you have that selected, the tool that you want it. And uh, let's say we want the head to be metal, but we don't want the teeth to be metal. Okay, so we have the metal material selected. Let's go ahead and select the teeth. And. Um, what we're going to do now is jump back and we'll just say a basic material right here. You can see that I applied that to the head also, but we're only going to be applying it to the teeth. So we got the teeth selected by themselves and the basic material. And you're going to go up here and make sure that your, um, your settings up here are correct because right now you see it's set to RGB, which is the default. And if you set it to RGB and say we go over here to color and we hit fill object, it's going to fill the object with the color, but obviously if we go and choose a different material, it's just going to change the material again. Because we didn't fill the material in. We just filled the color in. So go back to your basic material and go up here and you have a couple choices here. Um, you have your MRGB and you have your M. M being material channel and MRGB being your material red, green, blue channel, like I said before. Um, MRGB, you're just going to keep that on if you have a certain color selected. If you wanted, if you wanted to select a different color. Now, uh, if I hadn't already filled this in with the gray or the white color, then um, by selecting a different color, it would automatically fill that in, just like it's automatically filling in the material. But uh, we'll just go red right here. We'll just say like a really kind of bland red or whatever, and. Uh, go up to fill color and then fill object and hit that so with MRGB selected we filled in the material and the color to this mesh if you had selected just M it would have only filled in the material not the color okay pretty self-explanatory now if we turn back on the demo head you can see the material and the color applied to that and the reason obviously is because it applies it all by default but if you notice over here in your subtool palette 
the head still has the red wax material applied. And that basically just defines that it hasn't had any material applied. So it's keeping the default on it. But if you highlight the eyes, you can see in the subtool palette they have the material and the color applied to them. So to separate them, obviously, what we're going to do is re-click on the head here. Since we already finished the eyes, just re-click on the head and we'll go back to the metal material. And you see it's uh, got the red color to uh, applied by default, but we changed the material. And uh, it's a little hard to notice, but you can see the material is different than what it, what's on the eyes and the mouth. And we'll emphasize that more by just changing the color. And you see the eyes and the mouth stay the same because we already filled them in. So we're going to do the same to the head, but this time we're just going to apply the material, not the color. So we just filled the material in. It got brighter because we didn't apply that color. It's just keeping its default color. So we'll switch back to RGB and just, no matter what we change the color to, it's not going to do anything. Okay. Select blue. And now we can just color that in. Turn Z out off. Now, I know you might be going right now, well, how, you, how am I painting in? Well, because we haven't gotten to the texturing part yet. But I'm just doing this to show you an example. So don't worry about that just yet. We'll get that into a later lesson. But uh, I'm just basically showing you that that's how you're going to be separating your materials and your colors when you're filling them in and coloring them in. Now also you have the uh, option to blend together materials. Um, this wasn't, this is kind of always been available, but in later versions of ZBrush, it's become a little bit better because you can have smoother transitions. So in order to do that, let's make sure our geometry is up because this is going to matter quite a bit. I get it up to level 5, so I have it about just under a million polygons. And uh, I don't know if that'll be enough resolution, but we'll see. So we have our material filled in already on the head. And um, we're going to choose a different material. We'll choose uh, chrome, the really bright chrome. And make sure we only have the M selected, because we're just going to be messing with the material right now. With the M only selected, it's only going to paint the material. So we'll start painting it in here. And you can see the material has a harsh transition, but it's different. And I'm painting another material on top of a material that's already there. So depending on the way you have your uh, geometry set up and how many subtools you have, you can get some, some pretty interesting results with that stuff. So you can have a lot of fun messing around with that. things can make much difference but uh yeah again you can have a lot of fun messing around with that so next I'm going to show you how to modify the materials and we'll go back and we'll select the matte cap metal one and um, you can do this just simply by selecting the material because each material you select is going to have its own attributes. So just make sure you have the material you want selected. And we're going to go up here, the top menus, to the material menu right here. Now I showed you a little bit of this before, but we'll go a little more in depth. If you click on modifiers, that's going to open up this menu of attributes that are related to the material you have selected. Okay. So, maybe we want to change the intensity or something. Now, um, it's going to have unique attributes. It's not going to have the same attributes, attributes as every other material. Like, some other material might have a, a, a specular highlight attribute or several of them. Um, but 
the attributes that are included in the material are basically what make the material look like the way it does. So you're you're going to have some control over the material unless you wanted to create your own material or something. But you're going to have some control over it and you can create different results with it. But just messing around with it, you're going to get some crazy stuff a lot of the time. And uh, Colossus here, <laughs> something like that. But messing around with that, you'll get a uh, you'll get different results. So it's fun to mess around with. Outside of that, it's not much else. There's uh there's really pretty much all there is to it. The material menu is pretty simple. That's just a color mixer nothing special um, but yeah that's uh, pretty much all there is to it so experiment away have a lot of fun with it mess with different materials you can really get some crazy stuff going alright so uh, that'll be it for this lesson and we'll move on to the next